So what do you think? I mean, according to the experts, um, less than 10% of strategic plans are ever implemented. In fact, Tom Peters says that's grossly inflated. He thinks it's less than 5%. So why, why would you think that's, that's the case? Why do you think that so few planning is actually followed through? Don't stay focused, yep. yep. It's on a piece of paper. It's on a piece of paper. It's espoused, yes, rather than real. Yeah, it seems that the, the major reason we don't do serious planning is we actually do it as a social defence against anxiety. <laughs> that we, that we, we plan in a very comfortable, comfortable way. Um, I'll try to explain. Hopefully you can hear me over there, but... There are things that we're comfortable with. And there are things that we're uncomfortable with. Things that we have knowledge about. And things that we're ignorant about. So most planning seems to be done in this comfort knowledge zone. It's as though we go around in circles and we use fantasies like let's increase our business by 10% or let's have a new budget that says this or, this or that. And every year around about Christmas we have this thing called Yuletide redundancies when the, when the planning actually doesn't work and someone's got to pay for it. So it seems to me that the, what, we, what we need to be able to do is to dive a lot deeper, get into this knowledge uncomfortable area into the uncomfortable ignorance area and right around here again. So when we're talking about knowledge and being uncomfortable, there is some knowledge around, but we're uncomfortable about it. So in futures terms, there are emerging issues or trends. So I'm wondering what are some of the things that you're, you have some knowledge about that you may be uncomfortable with? Global warming, yeah? Yeah, they've been talking about global warming for a long, long time. Yeah. So what are you uncomfortable about with it? So we have people who are telling us it's going to happen and it can have devastating effects, but we want to ignore that. Again, a fantasy, I think. So they're the sort of questions we're trying to get people to look at, saying, OK, you have some knowledge, but you're uncomfortable about it. So they're, they're the trends, the emerging issues, etc. So futurists are trying to understand what they might mean. As David said, though, um, no one can predict the future. And I can actually say a lot without actually having any proof to give you. Um, but as Bill Lucas says, education is actually about inquiry, not performance. And I think we've made education very much about performance. And I think we need to get it back to being about inquiry. And I can't think of a better way of doing inquiry than to think about what sort of world do you really want to live in? What sort of world do you want your grandchildren's grandchildren to live in? And then to do something now about that. So I like to call that anticipatory action learning. That if you want to create the future you want, you need to start doing things about it now. What do you think of that statement? Hmm. Provocative. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> So actually, I think it's a leadership challenge. But to do leadership effectively, of course, is very dangerous. You can get shot, you know, either for real or metaphorically. It's dangerous because it requires you to say things that people don't want to hear and do things that people don't want you to do. So I have a belief that why CEO tenures are so short, it wasn't that the CEO was trying to create change, it was because he or she was trying to create change, <coughs> but didn't actually know how to do that without avoiding the anxiety. So one of the real advantages of futures thinking is to help people become comfortable with being uncomfortable, exposing them more to what's happening in the real world and getting them out of their fantasy world of that, that everything will remain the same. So when we... So just on that question, um, I, I believe that the only reason you need a leader is to create a preferred future. 
If you didn't want to do that, you wouldn't need leadership. You just need management. If you just wanted to maintain the status quo and maintain the rage, you wouldn't need a leader. So all a leader's job is to create that preferred future means going into areas that you haven't been in before. So maybe at your table you just might like to discuss that. Do you think that that's a fair assumption to say that the only reason you need a leader is to create a preferred future? Just have a chat about that. Let me know what you think. Okay, so where you've got to is fine. I'm trying to keep to the 10-15 uh, break. So what's, what's your thoughts? I heard you say it's situational. It depends. You know. The um, uncomfortable ignorance area, we're really talking about our worldview. How we see the world and how we see any situation. How this is always happening. How we jump to assumptions, to conclusions almost instantly. You know, our unconscious competent, working at 11 million bits of information per half second. It's really a very quick sort of intelligence, but it actually can get in the way because it's always giving us judgments, telling us what it should be. And when we're talking about ignorance com being comfortable, that's what we're trying to get you, to be comfortable with being uncomfortable, being able to ask the questions that need to be asked in order to think, find better solutions than we already have. Uh-huh. You give a teacher a whiteboard and, you know, they're on the... So what we're looking at, I'll, I'll shout because I can't do two... I'm a male. I can't. <laughs> As we're talking about change or disequilibrium over time. And this is a model of, uh, by a guy called Ron Heifetz at the Kennedy School at uh, Harvard. And Heifetz suggests for you to learn something significantly new will come with a certain amount of stress come with a certain amount of anxiety. In fact, he would argue that if you don't have any anxiety or you're not being stressed by what you're hearing, you in fact aren't learning. So that learning means that you will, to learn something new will upset you in some sort of way. So he says that you have a threshold of learning, that there is an opportunity for you to start learning something when the heat is up. But you also have a limit to tolerance. There is only so much heat that you can take. And of course, this will vary according to individuals. So what you end up with is, is this productive range of anxiety. Stress, if you like. So what happens when there is a significant new change happening? It usually happens down here. By the way, strategic planning is normally done down here. Starts up, let's say the GFC, for example, which is a misnomer. Finance couldn't have caused it. It is, of course, a global leadership crisis. And that's why it looks like it's going to continue for at least seven or eight years as these worldviews try to solve it their way. The French and the German have this um, live to work worldview. The Greeks have the work to live <laughs> worldview. <laughs> And while they're trying to say, if we're going to give you money, do it our way, I don't think you're really going to solve it. So they're trying to solve it technically. So the GFC started here when there wasn't much stress. It got into a situation where you could do something about it. It got too hot and they introduced the bailouts. Now, as much as I'm in favour of the bailouts, they were based on fear and protection. Just imagine if that money had been put into something new and something interesting and something really that you could have happened. And so what happened is the opportunity was lost. And this is what's called a technical solution. They actually thought that the answer came from the past, that the answer came from their knowledge that existed. Occasionally people try to, to pick it up and they work with it and it gets too hard and they let it go. And that's called work avoidance. If David wants me to be provocative, I think that both Malcolm Turnbull and Kevin Rudd lost their jobs on the ETS. They tried to push it through too quickly. 
and they lost the opportunity. 